I always say if, if people are not getting at least five years and ideally 10 years out of the batteries, mm. uh, they're doing something wrong. Yeah. Hello and welcome to another one of our Ask the Expert series here at Boat How To. I'm Jan Attenstedt. And I'm uh, Nigel Calder. And uh, today we got a common question. Why boat batteries rarely live up to their published life expectancy? That's mostly concerning lead acid batteries. And let's see what Nigel has to say about that. Well, the, those lead acid batteries, all the published statistics, mm -hmm. they're generated in a laboratory. Mm -hmm. um, so the battery is discharged to whatever level, typically maybe 80% mm -hmm. level of discharge, 20% remaining capacity, and then it's fully recharged mm -hmm. in control conditions and at a fixed temperature. Mm -hmm. And straight after the discharge normally. Yeah. Uh. So, uh, and you might, with a, with a high-end AGM battery, you're going to get four or 500 cycles mm -hmm. before the battery fails. And failure, incidentally, is defined as as uh, remaining capacity is 80% mm -hmm. of what it was to start with. Mm -hmm. Because typically once a battery goes below 80% capacity, it crashes fairly mm -hmm. quickly. Yeah. So, and we get in a boat and of course, um, the, the temperature varies all the time. And much of the time we've got our batteries maybe installed in an engine room where it's quite hot mm -hmm. uh, and that deteriorates the battery yeah. anyway. Try to avoid that if you yeah. can. <laughs> and then we, uh, uh, much of the time, we never fully recharge the batteries, mm -hmm. yeah. so then they suffer from something called sulfation. So, so the uh, operating characteristics in the boat are just totally different to what they are in the lab when the mm -hmm. batteries are tested. So, so there really is no real matchup between lab-generated data and boat data. But, mm -hmm. but the, the bottom line in this is we need to create the operating conditions and the duty cycle in our boat that replicates the lab conditions mm -hmm. as closely as possible if we want to optimize battery mm -hmm. life. And then, of course, it's um, what we do with smart chargers and multi-step regulators mm -hmm. and, and, um, and the various bits and pieces that we've got in our courses to help people manage mm -hmm. their batteries. Yeah. yeah, so speaking of which, actually, if you want to learn how to properly take care of your lead acid batteries, we got actually two modules on, on batteries and charging in our Boat Electrics mm -hmm. 101 course, where we talk about that in detail and actually show you how you can achieve lifetimes of easily five to ten years with a good quality lead acid battery. Should be able to, yeah. yeah. I always say if, if people are not getting at least five years and ideally ten years out of the batteries, mm. uh, they're doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah. So either the batteries are not properly sized or your charging regime is not properly set up to your needs. So there's a lot to think about and actually in the end it saves you quite a bit of money because a huge battery bank, even with lead acid batteries which are cheaper than lithium ion, but still you're going to going to spend probably a couple hundred or thousand dollars on that. Oh, I, I've seen plenty of battery mm -hmm. banks on boats that are two and three and four thousand mm -hmm. dollars yeah. on uh, larger cruising boats with big battery banks. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, you know, if you if you wipe out a two thousand dollar battery bank in five years, that's four hundred dollars a year. That's eight dollars a week mm -hmm. yeah. that you're actually spending on your batteries. Yeah. Uh, it, it ends up being a significant part of the maintenance costs mm -hmm. on a number of boats, actually, yeah. on cruising boats. Yeah. Well, better spend a few hundred dollars on our Board Electrics 101 course, and uh, that might save you some money in the long run. So it's also, <laughs> I think, worth mentioning, particularly for cruising boats, this is where solar really comes mm -hmm. into its own, mm -hmm. because uh, solar, uh, so any, any solar on the boat is going to maintain the batteries in a higher average state of charge uh, uh. than would otherwise be the case. Uh, so that's going to greatly extend the cycle life mm -hmm. of the batteries yeah. and it's going to reduce sulfation issues. Uh, so there's a lot of benefit to solar just beyond just generating electricity for mm -hmm. boat use yeah. in terms of extending battery life. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Actually, if you, if you do it smart, let's say you're charging with an alternator and you do it in the morning and then you get your solar charging during the day and actually tops up during the, the float phase, you can actually get to a 100% state yeah. of charge pretty yeah. much every day, which is what I normally achieve here in the Met in the summer. I mean, my batteries hardly ever go below 70%. Okay, I also have a very low energy intensive uh, lifestyle here on board, but still... Yeah, I, I wouldn't live on it. your boat, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you used to when you were a bit younger. Uh, you know, I got to have a fridge and freezer and I have to have hot water. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I got a fridge. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, check out our courses at uh, boathowto.com and uh, see you soon. <laughs>